Hi and welcome to This Is Your Life. Well we're here at Sydney's Kings Cross Railway Station where once upon a time above us was Australia's most legendary music venue. But if peak hour is pretty noisy here, in those days it had nothing on that venue called Surf City where it was much louder. It was where some of Australia's greatest pop singers were launched. And tonight's guest of honour was one of them. He went from teen idol on to become our best known rock and roller. In fact, his music inspired a following he still has today, 30 years later. Now he's also turned author and is about to launch his first book. And that's where we're going to surprise him, right in the middle of his book launch. So, let's go. That's what I did was, um... I'm a frustrated poet too, and seeing as I'm an author now, I may as well do the whole damn lot. It's very nice to, uh, that's another nice thing, is being able to say, uh, oh shit. I'm going to buy my way out of this event. <laughs> There's no way you can buy it. Oh, and I know you're not all that fussed about it. I'm not. You have actually said to Lynn, uh, please don't let them ever do that. I swear I will. Oh, God. So, and we're going to do the show now. Right now? Well, we'll give you a couple of minutes to say goodbye to your guests here, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but the show. Thank God I didn't have a couple of drinks then, mate. <laughs> <laughs> William Richard Thorpe, you were born on March 29th, 1946, in Manchester, England, <laughs> the only child of Bill and Mabel Thorpe. Your father is a bulldozer driver who plays the accordion and the piano. Your mother is a showgirl who hangs up her dancing shoes to raise you. She becomes your fiercest supporter and she joins us now. Now, Mrs. Thorpe, what sort of a son was he Bill? He was very good. She's 89. Dad, Dad and I was proud of him as a boy. And he's, and he's always been a good son, hasn't he? Yeah. 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 <laughs> he's been a lovely son. Why don't you take a seat over there yeah, next to I Billy? Will. Thanks, Mrs. Thorpe. You were eight in 1955 when you and your parents joined the ranks of the 10 pound palms and migrate to Australia. Your first taste of this strange country is in the Salvation Army Hostel in Melbourne. Now that same year your parents present you with a guitar and something magical happens when you pick it up and play it for the first time. From then on you rarely put it down. The family then moves to Brisbane and your father opens a general store. Now a local talent scout spots you strumming your guitar behind the shop counter. She offers you a two-week gig at the Railway Hotel in Woolungumba. Is that right? Woolungabba. Woolungabba. When you're just 10 years old. That's right. Billy, your career now starts to take off. At the ripe old age of 11, you become a regular on local television programs like Teen Beat. You earn your stripes in stage shows, clubs, even vaudeville. At 16, you make your first national television appearance on the afternoon teen show, Saturday Date. Oh, you mean the Pimple Show. It's the host of Saturday Date and the man who gave you your first big break, Jimmy Hannon. Oh! <laughs> Look at this face. Look at this face. Now, what's this about the Pimple Show? Well, the, the rival show was Bandstand, right? And it was, right yeah. They had a, a sponsor called Clearasil, and everybody's clean cut, you know, Brian, Henderson, everything like that. But on, on Saturday night, they were down to earth. It was a great uh, atmosphere, and they oh, were a bit, a bit on the grunge side with yeah, a little bit of acne. Show. You know, not that you had acne. Oh, I did. I had no, tons no, no, of it. No, no, no. <laughs> he was always a very smooth performer. He this gave guy. me my first shot here. He yeah? did. And yeah. what was his act like? Oh, 
Well, we were Jew right. I was a Jew and a yeah. Jewette when I first came the James came Boys. Yeah. yeah, that's right. James yeah. Boys. And uh, he got top money. Five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had to pay a big talent. He is a big talent. He's a big star and he's still oh, Congratulations, you, Billy. Thank Enjoy you. the night. Thanks, Thank Jimmy. You Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. You're a marvellous neighbour. Billy, when you are performing, school certainly takes a back seat. Your headmaster despairs of you. He even predicts you'll end up in Brisbane's Boggo Road Jail if you don't change your tune. <laughs> now, was that, a, was that prediction justified? Well, uh, I, I, if I hadn't gotten to music, probably that's where I was headed. Yeah, considering the people I hung out with at, at a young age. Yeah. A few of them end up there? Yeah, many of them. <laughs> OK, well, don't go away, because, because coming up, Billy Thorpe is crowned King of Pop. But first, let's hear from a few of your mates, starting with Olivia Newton-John and her sister, Rona. Oh. G'day, mate. Hi, Billy. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. We know you must be cringing, and we promise we won't embarrass you with any of those terrible stories. I didn't promise. <laughs> I read your book last night. What a hot book. It's going to be a smash. It's fantastic. It we're, really is. We're very proud of you and I think you're a wonderful singer and a great guy and have a good show and don't cringe too much. See ya. Hi Billy. Sorry I can't be with you tonight. We'll always have those bandstand days memories to share, won't we? You are very respected because you're a great Australian performer and I hope you're having a wonderful night. Thorby, Meredith. Uh, just thought I'd run this by you. In 1963, you were part of a duo. You became a solo act halfway through the song when your friend fell off the stage. Uh, look, mate, I'm really proud of you. I'm pleased for you. Have a great night, and nobody deserves it more than you. Back to the Billy Thorpe story. It's 1963 and the world is on the verge of a musical revolution and you are hell-bent on being a big part of it. At 17 you head for Sydney, the capital of pop music. You hit King's Cross and immediately fall in love with not one but two women, Pepper and Natalie, and set up house with both of them. True? <laughs> My mother doesn't know anything about this by the way. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't read the book yet. You know? I was, <laughs> was going to break this to her gently, but yes, it's true. True? Yeah. yeah. Jeez, to be a rock star, Billy. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> well, right in the heart of King's Cross is Surf City. It's the mecca for thousands of hormone-charged teenagers. They come to listen to surf music and to do a dance called the Stomp. There it is. It's also where bands get a shot at the big time. At 17, you're asked to sing here with a group called the Aztecs and together you develop your own version of the stomp. Alright! <laughs> Billy, you haven't seen uh, some of these guys for 30 years, but here they are now. The original Aztecs, Vince Maloney, Tony Barber, Cole Pajan and Bluey Watson. <laughs> <laughs> so listen guys, will you show us, will you just give us a quick rendition of the stomp for us? Go on. Billy, will you join in? Change your way, Leave me woman, I'll be what I say now. The last time I'm telling you, what that job. <laughs> that mashed potato was a big hit of yours. Have a look at this. Do you remember this? Now, they were pretty complex lyrics, weren't they? They were. Uh, 172 times in four minutes. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Ben and I thought that we'd pick a song that would uh, tee off every parent in Australia, and that was the one that we was thought. Well. And it did it. Yeah, Mashed yeah, potato. Yeah. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate oh, it. Thank you. Oh, it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. 
Billy, your singing career is about to take off, but your personal life takes a tragic twist. Your flatmate Natalie is brutally murdered in the cross. Unable to deal with her death, your other partner, Pepper, leaves you and you're now very much alone. So you throw yourself into your music. As a regular fixture at Surf City, you play to 2,000 kids a night. The next step is the national stage. And one man who helps you get there is journalist and author James Oram. Now, Jim couldn't be here tonight because he's seriously ill with cancer, but sends you this message. Well, tonight, Billy, this is your tribute, and you enjoy it. You deserve it. You're a rock hero. You're a rock legend. It is now June 1964, you're 18 and about to turn the Australian music world on its ear. Billy Thorpe and the Aztecs released the cover song, Poison Ivy, and it screams up the charts to number one. In Australia, Billy Thorpe and the Aztecs are now up there with the Beatles. At just 18, you have three singles in the top 40 all at the same time. You also win a Logie for Best Teenage Performer. In the eyes of tens of thousands of fans, you are their idol. In the eyes of their parents, you are the devil himself. <laughs> There's another happy customer. <laughs> And after the break, fame and then infamy as Billy Thorpe becomes the bad boy of rock and roll. <laughs> oh, no. But first, some cheerios <laughs> from a few friends. You've always been a, a profound inspiration uh, to me and my brothers. Your unique singing. You're probably one of the greatest singers I've ever known in my life, and I'm sure you've been told that before. And we're very, very proud to know you. Congratulations on this wonderful night. Hey, Billy. You know, I never met you, but I used to listen, you know, when I was a teenager. And, uh, hey, congratulations there, bud. I hope your life's not over. You know, next to Judy Garland, Billy, you probably have to do the greatest version of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. But in all sincerity, I don't know anybody in the rock and roll business that still smiles, that still looks as good as you do, and that's still as enthusiastic as you were yesterday. Keep on rocking, and thank you for, for being such a great role model. Tribute to Mr. Billy Thorpe. Billy, you're not even 20 when money squabbles blow Billy Thorpe and the Aztecs apart in 1965, but you don't miss a beat. With four new musos, you simply reform the band and your reign continues. The following year, you host your own television show called It's All Happening. You're only 21 when you host another television program called Go. But you then announce live on air that you plan to experiment with the drug LSD. <laughs> the Minister for Health threatens to throw you in jail and the show is suspended. <laughs> so what made you do that? Uh, it was, uh, seemed like a good idea at the, the time. time. <laughs> I was an idiot. <laughs> You're 22 when you make another public announcement. This time it's your engagement to Jackie home and life is pretty sweet. Two years after you announce your engagement to Jackie, you break it off. But it's not long before you fall in love again. This time you spot a beautiful blonde woman roaring through the streets on a motorcycle. You're in a taxi and you tell the driver, follow that girl. <laughs> and you've been following her ever since. It's your partner of 25 years, Lynn Thorpe. <laughs> So obviously Billy caught up with you that day. Yeah, I did see her on a bike and I got the cab to follow her and, uh, and that's how we met. Were you impressed with it? <laughs> well... Initially? It grew on me. <laughs> <laughs> Would you mind taking a seat next to Billy, please? Uh, 
the lineup of the band changes once again, and you make headlines when you're arrested, this time for swearing on stage. You go to jail, but you're unrepentant. And typical is the wild man of rock and roll, as soon as you're released, you do it again. <laughs> Off stage, you and the band are just as infamous. There are always trashed hotel rooms, and on one occasion, you're even thrown out of a New South Wales country town. True? <laughs> yeah. You certainly earn a reputation for your wild all-night parties. I should know. I collected your garbage. It's Men at Work's lead singer, Colin Hay. <laughs> I just saw this guy last week too. I can't believe it. Why were you taking out his garbage? Because I was a garbo. Uh, and, uh, that? It was it was big news when Billy Thorpe moved into my neighbourhood, Bomoris, and uh, yeah, I, was, I did garbage on Wednesdays and Saturdays. So when did you meet him? Uh, years later, uh, when they were when they were in LA and they were just like the toast of the town. He actually told me the story. He asked me backstage. And said to me, Probably describe my house, you know, and said you lived in this house and your driveway looked like this and your bedroom was here and your garbage tins around the back. And I'm thinking, yeah. what is this guy talking about? And he, I said, how do you know? He said, I used to be your garbo. And I, I've told that story, not... A few times. A few times. <laughs> because he was just so open about it and so on. And uh, he, he's a lovely man. This fantastic. Guy. Yeah. Fantastic. Colin, thank you very much yeah. for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Oh, Cheers, man. man. Thank nice you. jacket. Thank you. <laughs> Your irreverent antics have by now made the Aztecs Aussie working class heroes. That same year, thousands of your followers come to salute you at the Sunbury Pop Festival, Australia's version of Woodstock. Clap your hands. Most people I know think that I'm crazy. I know at times I act a little hazy. Recognise that bloke? Oh, Molly! <laughs> <laughs> Molly Meldrum, minus the hat. Billy, you're 26 and become a father for the first time when your daughter Rusty is born. By now, the times and the music are a-changing. Only one more album makes it into the charts before you and the Aztecs finally break up in 1975. Ever the Larrikins, you all pose bare-bottomed on the album's front cover. Billy, you now embark on a solo career but soon become disenchanted with life in Australia. You've been in the public spotlight since you were 10 and you've had enough. You pack up your family and leave for America. And after the break, Billy Thorpe rides into Hollywood. But first, let's hear from a couple of your mates. Not worthy, Bill! I'm not worthy! How are you, Billy? Bill, the sad truth about it is, yes, you are the greatest rock and roll singer this country's ever produced. The prettiest. I am the loudest. <laughs> hey, it's just the truth, Bill. But this is your night. Congratulations, mate. Hey Thorpey, how are you mate? Sorry I couldn't be there. Listen, I uh, just had to tell you this, uh, you were the guy that I used to go and see. You're responsible for me screaming like this. I used to go and see you when I was about 14. I remember going to Sunbury, and uh, well, what I remember of Sunbury, and you were the best mate. I used to come and watch you, get up the front, head bang, oop oop doo and all that. You're still doing it mate, good to see you. You're 30 in 1976 when you make a new start in the US and reinvent yourself. Your first American album, Children of the Sun, creates a totally different sound. You describe it as Pink Floyd meets the Aztecs. <laughs> the album rockets up the charts all over the country and within weeks it goes gold. Then in 1978, your second child, Lauren, is born. Your two biggest fans join us now, Lauren and Rusty, all the way from Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> so girls, what's it like having a rock star as a dad? That'd be a bit different, wouldn't it? Mm, pretty mm. cool. Yeah. Cool? Everyone always thinks he's our boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, well, that's pretty flattering. He never conforms to the, the school banquets. He always comes in his leather jacket instead of the nice little suit. And... Is that right? So you're pretty young. Well, they used to be freaked out by me, be honest. I, mean, yeah. I, I had long hair and they said, get your hair cut, and then I was cool, you know. Girls, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> This year you turn 50, 
but you're still a big kid at heart. In fact, it's Billy the Kid and Butch Cassidy who inspire you to regularly dress up as a cowboy. You're a member of the elite hole-in-the-wall cowboy gang, a group of directors, actors and musos who don their 10-gallon hats and go riding in the Wyoming wilderness. Now, they've heard that we've kidnapped you and they're doing their best to try and get you back. Boys, we pulled that one off. Yes, sir. Now we can pay that stinking ransom money and spring on Billy. How much do we get, Cash? Looks like about 200 grand. Woo -hoo. All right. Why don't we just offer him 100? We'll keep the rest for ourselves. <laughs> hey, hey, we're talking about a fellow whole wall gang member here. Let's offer him 50 and see if they push us. Hey, how are we going to ride from here to Australia? Well, I'd say very carefully. Sure as hell know what to do. What are you saying? You saying I'm not the outlaw that Billy Thorpe is? That's it. Grab your weapons. And whoever gets out of this alive, take the ransom. Spring Billy and Cow Billy did all this for him. Let's go! Oh, no! <laughs> Well, Billy, one of the guys did make it out alive, and he's ridden all the way from America to be with you tonight, Cash Edwards. Hey, the ransom, you can come back now. <laughs> Hey, Billy. Oh, <laughs> Can you believe that? I don't believe it. Hey, buddy. I don't yeah. believe it. Billy, Billy, come over a little closer oh, with us if you can. Oh, God. Cash, how are you? It's great to see you, man. Now, Cash, tell us more about the Hole in the Wall gang. Well, it's a, it's a group of friends from Denver and Hollywood. We get together every year, dress up as outlaws, and go riding where Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid uh, went and camp out and the whole bit. And, and how does he handle camping out? Well, well, I'm the singer, you know. They, uh, I, I was the first Aussie to, to be invited. I actually went on the 10th anniversary some years ago, and uh, they gave me a guitar, and I knew every Hank Williams song ever played, and they said, let's get this guy in the gang, you know? He knows one Hank Williams song. <laughs> <laughs> Cash, thanks very much for joining thanks. us, and I really appreciate it. Congratulations, mate. Oh, believe it. Billy, it's been a wild and exciting ride, from pop idol to rock and roll bad boy, from businessman to family man. You live and you love it all. Well, the Sunbury Aztecs are over there waiting for you, and we wondered if you wouldn't mind closing tonight's show with your anthem song. Okay, what about it, ladies yeah. and gentlemen? Yeah.